नमस्कार माय नेम इज गौरव रस्तोगी चिन्मय जी नमस्कार राम गौरव जी सुप्रभात एब्सोल्यूट एब्सोल्यूट प्लेजर सीइंग यू सुप्रभात टू ऑल ऑफ यू प्रणाम थैंक यू फॉर डूइंग दिस सेशन गुड मॉर्निंग हां नमस्कार चिन्मय जी कैलाश प्रणाम प्रणाम कैलाश जी बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है आपको बहुत दूर से ही सही पर आपको देखकर बहुत दिन हो गए एंड सो वी आर सो हैप्पी we are really ji, privileged ji. that uh, you're giving us this beautiful occasion to to enlighten us and so we welcome you <laughs> great delight to see you. great delight to see you may ji should uh, i are you ready to begin i will just start us off uh, absolutely absolutely please and with your permission i'll introduce you for a couple of minutes and then uh, i uh, will open it up for uh, 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 an um, uh, an address from you and then q and a with the audience so as we begin uh, namaskar and welcome to today's uh, distinguished lecture my name is gaurav rastogi i'm a board member and dean at hindu community institute this is a part of our counselor of hindu tradition class and we've invited our distinguished speaker today to uh, to address us and for those who are not part of hci we welcome you to today's conversation and uh, we hope uh, you will uh, get to learn more about hci later on your own time now to begin i'd like to invite you to join us in uh, in just uh, sitting quietly we're going to chant om three times and then our opening prayer sahana bhavatu so please sit comfortably sitting in any comfortable posture with your back straight back neck and head in a straight line close your eyes gently and relax the expression on the face relax your shoulders relax your belly take the next three breaths into the belly letting the belly expand as you inhale gently letting the belly return back as you exhale bring your palms together in namaskar mudra at the heart center pressing the palms together gently touching the fingers together gently gently touching the back of the hand the thumbs into the chest we're going to chant om three times and then the opening prayers sahana bhavatu exhale completely take a deep breath inhale om Bend forward in a deep sense of surrender. Come back up, blinking. Open your eyes and bring your palms down. Namaskar and welcome to today's uh, session. <clears throat> uh, on behalf of the Hindu Community Institute, I am. We are delighted to invite you to a distinguished lecture. Um, our distinguished speaker today is Dr. Chinmay Pandya, who is Pro Vice Chancellor at Dev Samskriti Vishwavidyalaya in Haridwar. Dr. Pandya. is the grandson of one of the greatest scholars seers and philosophers of recent times in india professor pandit uh, shri rama sharma acharya who is the founder of the all world gayatri parivar fraternity which has over 100 million members and thousands of global centers for social uh, reform uh, dr pandya currently serves as the pro vc for the dev sanskriti vishwavidyalaya and is the editor of dev dev sanskriti an interdisciplinary international journal that addresses a broad range of indian intellectual interests including vedic philosophy culture psychology communication education ayurveda indian and eastern studies and religious pedagogies uh, dr pandya is uh, his subject for this talk 
is Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, which is also the subject of his recent series of lectures, which are available on, on YouTube. And I'm happy to share the link with you and I'll drop the link here in the chat. Now, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali are much loved around the world as a foundational text for the understanding of yoga and Hinduism. And uh, it helps to have watched the, the lecture series uh, uh, to, uh, to take full advantage of uh, your presence here. So Dr. Pandya, Namaskar, and thank you very much for being with us today. I'd like to invite you to please first address us uh, for a few minutes, <laughs> and then we'll open the conversation for, um, for Q&A. Thank you. And for everyone, I'm going to mute everyone, and, uh, and that way uh, we will... Uh, um, we will not. We will be able to hear Dr. Pandya uh, seamlessly, and then uh, after that, you are welcome to unmute yourself and uh, and ask questions or raise your hand, and I'll call you out. Thank you. One second. Let me unmute you. Sorry. Would you mind unmuting? I, yes. Not yet. <laughs> Dhanivad Gauravji, I was just saying that it's such a delight actually to finally have had this opportunity to speak to all of you with the HCI and with many people that I see on the screen, Kalashi, Emmy, Nimitji, many other people. Like, you know, we have had a very long, a strong and very affectionate relationship, not only me, but the entire Gayatri Parivar. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity to have uh, to discuss about some of the like the one of the most salient scriptures of India, Patanjali's Yoga Sutra. And before I start to talk about it, because we have got very short period of time, I believe we have got about ten minutes to speak upon, and then we would have question and answer. So uh, I will probably jump straight to the to the topic. But before that, I would like to start with the recitation of the Gayatri Mantra, and most of you. Uh, are definitely aware of the Gayatri Mantra. But one of the beauty about the Gayatri Mantra is that this is a prayer probably of universal peace uh, and uh, harmony. And in the current times when we have got so much of pain and loss and strife and, and grief all over the world, I believe like, you know, it's a, a prayer that shall allow not only want to walk on the righteous path, but want to be connected with the most uh, higher supreme and divine consciousness. The prayer is dedicated to Savita, Savita Sarvas Prasavita, Nirukta says, which means the one that has given birth to all. So we are praying to our mother and we are praying to our mother with a, with a sentiment of taking us to the path of righteousness. So those of you who could recite the Gayatri Mantra, I would again request you to join me in this prayer of Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhur Bhuvaswa Tatsavetur Varenyam Bhargo Pranams to everyone. I would like you to take yourself back uh, a bit in the time, 15th of January, 1897. That was the day when Swami Vivekanand returned back to India. So he was in abroad in US and Canada and most of the European countries. And then 15th of January, 1897, his ship arrived to Colombo. And by that time, like, you know, his Kirti was everywhere. Everyone has heard about Swami Vivekanand. So almost every single person of Colombo was there to greet him and to receive him. There was a big, like, you know, celebration. I think there were 20,000 people who gathered at the port of Sri Lanka. And the person who was heading the welcome ceremony 
he welcomed Swami Vivekananda and then he asked him a question. He asked him the question that Swamiji, you went to US and you went to West. And of course, your presence helped people in West. They could hear about Gita, Vedanta, Sankhya, Yoga Sutra. All such traditions that they were never aware of. And so your presence, of course, benefited them. But how did it benefit you? You had to be away from motherland, Bharat, for such a long period of time. How could it was of any benefit to you? And Vivekananda answered in such a beautiful manner. I would ask everyone, this is the first lecture uh, given by Swami Vivekananda on the Indian soil after his return back to uh, India, because Sri Lanka used to be the part of India those days. So he said that uh, I received the most benefit of actually going to abroad. He said, if I hadn't been to abroad, then all the things that I believed out of sentiments, I would have never believed them with the proof. He said, now I have been away from India for five years, and now I can say with absolute certainty and conviction that if there is one land in the entire world where every soul who is taking birth and he has to come for its final salvation and salvage and purification and liberation, then that soul has to come to India. He said, if there is one place where Adhyatmic Shruti, Kshama, Daya, Tyag, Karuna, Baladan, compassion, sacredness, sanctity, all such qualities of humanity, they have reached to the final, like in a platform, then that place is India. And one thing that he said is so beautiful, he said that if entire world has to be obliged to India from this day now, because if not today, then 100 years from now, that light would again emerge from the lens of India. And that would give birth to a new humanity. And I think that is the time now. The time is now that Swami Vivekananda talked about that imagine for a second that if uh, yoga and Sankhya, Vedanta and Astha, Adhyatma, Dharma, people like Vivekananda, Gurudev, Aurobindo, Ramana Maharshi, Rishis, Kabir, Sur, Tulsi, Meera, Chaitanya, Shukadev Ashtavakra, if people like that have never walked on the land of India, they haven't given the kind of wisdom that humanity requires these days, then probably we would have been a better kind of pro magnan or Neanderthal man, but not Homo sapiens. So like, you know, for one to be Homo sapiens, the kind of wisdom that required so I think the kind of wisdom required that came from India. And this is not, I'm not saying it allegorically. Think about it like, you know, when almost half of the world was killing each other, like uh, bar barbaric people. And that time, the concept of Ahinsa and Karuna came from India. Buddha came, Mughal came, Ranti Dev came, Tadichi came. So many great people came from India and gave the concept of Atmat Sarabhuteshu, Ayam Nijah Parogati, Ganana Labuchetsa, Udara Charita Nam To Sudhev Kutumbakam. That this is mine, that is your, that kind of feeling belongs to the children. For the people who have got the compassion for them, the entire world is one single family. And that kind of wisdom emerged from India 6,000 years ago. And even before anyone actually heard about reading, learning scriptures, Nalanda, Takshashila, Vikramshila, Vallabhi, Kanchi and Navdeep, these six universities, they already had closed their doors. Forget about like an opening. They had already closed their doors because 60 batches had already been passed out. And I think uh, that kind of wealth and legacy that is there in the Indian wisdom tradition is the foundation of what we are right now. And the reason it is important actually to share it because uh, Patanjali was the vice chancellor of Takshashila Vishwavidyalaya, and he wrote one of the uh, most pioneering scripture that would ever emerge from India. To understand the beauty and wealth of it, we need to understand that there are two kinds of scriptures. One is scriptures are those which have got uh, temporal significance, like, you know, transient significance. They are of value now. If something is being written about COVID, that may be of value right now, 
but maybe not so much once the COVID is gone. You can learn the lessons from it, but you cannot give a direction to the humanity. And the scriptures like Gita or, or uh, Brahma Sutra or all Upanishads and Patanjali Yoga Sutra, all these scriptures which are written for the inner psyche of the human being, they would always be of significance. They are of eternal, timeless, absolute value because they're not talking about something exterior. They're talking about the transformation of the consciousness. They're talking about the transmutation of the personality and making one to reach to the higher possible uh, potential that every human soul has. And this is the this is the like you know the central message of the Indian wisdom tradition. If we just close our eyes and go back to the time when Patanjali was writing it, there were thirty two schools of philosophies in India. They were like Yoga, Sankhya, Vedant, Mimamsa, so many other uh, Darshan traditions were there. Even on Yoga Sutra, so many people wrote the commentary. Acharya Shankar wrote, Ramanuj wrote, Ramanand Saraswati wrote, Hariharananda wrote. Hariranandar, uh, 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 Swami Hariranandar wrote Basuti and Vachaspati Mishra wrote Tattvai Sharadi, Vajjana Vikshu wrote Yoga Vartik, uh, Raja Bhoj wrote Martanda Vritti. So, so many uh, tikas were written only on the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. So, there were different schools of uh, wisdom available on the land of India. But if we try to hear the central message, what each of them were trying to convey, then the main message they were trying to convey is to remind us that this human life that we have got, it has got two doors. One door is opening towards divinity. If we descend in our consciousness, if we start to go down, then we turn into an animal. Our passions become primal, our pursuit becomes animalistic. But if we start to ascend in our life, Manushyame Devattu Kaudai, then we start to become a Rishi, Muni, Siddha, Santa, Mahatma, and nothing changes outside. If Vivekan becomes Vivekanan, he does not gain an extra limb or he develops an extra eye. He is just like us. Akriti remains the same, but Prakriti is transformed. Sharir remains the same, but Chetana is transmuted. And that is the idea of the Yoga Sutra is to remind us the possibility that this human life that we have got, either by default or as a blessing, it is there to take this opportunity to reach to the last possible frontier, which Patanjali talks about as the Samadhi. Not the liberation in moksha, but it is the Samadhi in terms of reaching to that kind of a stillness where all karma, all vichar, all impulses, everything has found to the last calm, serene, ultimate end. And that is what the Patanjali is talking about. I, I uh, would be happy to share one story and then I take the question because I am aware that time is short. Uh, and this uh, story comes in the Vedanta. And the story is of a lioness and lioness was pregnant. And she was about to hunt when a hunter came and shot the lioness. So lioness died. But before giving birth, this uh, lioness gave birth to a cub. Uh, before dying and she gave birth to a, a lion cub and this lion cub uh, had no mother and father so he was lost uh, there was a herd of deers passing by and herd of deers when they looked at the lion cub they out of compassion they embraced him and made him part of their herd too so this lion cub forgot that he was a lion he started to think that he's a deer so he started to behave like a deer one day a big lion came and rolled when he rode, all the deers started to run and this lion also started to run. So lion thought, I have seen deers running, but why the hell this deer is running? So lion is running. So he forgot about the deers. He said to lion, where are you going? He said, I am a deer. He said, no, no, you are not a deer. You are a lion. He said, no, no, I am a deer. He said, no, no, you are a lion. So he took him to the water. He said, just see in the reflection, is there a difference between you and me? And when he saw the reflection and he realized that he and the other being are the same, his Roar came back. For a lion to remember that he's a lion, he needs another lion. For us to remember that we are divine beings, we need Patanjali. We need to remember that the ultimate possibilities that human beings can reach are not there in the superficial pursuits of the life. They are not outside. They are in the inner journey, antar jagat, that one has to go 
If not today, then tomorrow. And that journey is where the Patanjali is taking us. So if I take the liberty, uh, 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 Gauravji had asked already two questions uh, before we begin. Uh, would you please talk about Sage Patanjali and his uh, major works? Uh, little is known about Sage Patanjali. He came from the tradition of Maharshi Angira, one of the Saptarishis, who is also one of the most uh, prominent uh, rishis of the Vedas, Angiras as he is known. And uh, his father, Maharshi Patanjali's father, uh, Prachina Yoga, was also actually mentioned in different uh, Vedic traditions. And it seems that Patanjali actually received the education in a, another famous rishi school called Kothum. There are different disputes, and I think disputes in terms of when he was born, where he was raised, and where he was writing. Uh, some scholastic traditions believe that he was writing in the Rudra Prayag, where the Patanjali's temple is. Some scholastic traditions believe that it was written in the West. But I think rather than going into that kind of dispute and archaeological importance of it, it is important to know what Patanjali contributed. Because there is one simple message in the scriptures and message is that our transformation can only take place if there is a transformation of the consciousness. And that transformation of consciousness is only possible if I'm able to purify my karma. There are three layers where I accumulate the impurities. At the layer of the sharir, at the layer of the body, I I imbibe the impurities, I am attracting the impurities. For their purification, Patanjali wrote a great text of the Ayurveda for the Shuddhi of the Sharir. Another layer is the layer of the Vani, from where I am also doing the Papa. Vanik doshas are being uh, done through the Vani. And for their purification, Patanjali wrote the grammar, the Vyakarana, which is the Panini's Vyakrat is one of the greatest compendiums of the Sanskrit uh, scriptures. And then for the purification of the Chitta, Yoga in a Chitta Sipadena Vacha Malam Sharida Sitchavetakir, that is the famous verse for Vatimili, that he wrote the text for the purification of all three. And that is the beauty of Patanjali, that not only he talked about the diagnosis, but he gave the treatment. And the reason Patanjali becomes so important, one thing is that it is easy to give the Shastra. It is easy to write a long, detailed commentary upon something smaller. But it is very difficult to write something precise, where not even a single word can be substituted. Like entire Yoga Sutra has got 2000 words. Nowadays, the master's student are writing the dissertation. They are writing 3,000 to 5,000 words. And you can imagine that Patanjali wrote the greatest text of his scripture, 2,000 words altogether, altogether. And not even a single word is there that you can change, replace or substitute. Because he's writing by walking on the journey of the inner refinement. We can only create a word. That's another issue with the translation that many people actually go with the translation and they try to translate yoga, they try to translate the chitta, they try to translate the vritti. And I, I believe that is the most inaccurate practice. The reason it is because you they are phenomena in their own right. Chitta is not only the word, it is a phenomena in their own right. One has to understand the entire concept of the karma phala vidhan and sankhya to understand what chitta is. If you are unable to understand the chitta, then you are just going on a very blind journey. And many people have made the mistake that to make it popular, they try to actually give the uh, near about translation that is available in, in English. And that near about translation would only give a confusion to the mindset of the reader because they are talking about something else. For example, if I say, like, you know, one simple uh, thing I would say that there is a word for papa in English, sin. What is the word for punya? You would not have a word for punya in English. Because the reason is because it is just like, you know, they are the, they are the like, you know, uh, concepts and phenomena in their own right. 
that one has to understand the entire concept to understand the, the um, um, word. And it is not right actually to do to the translations uh, only by actually following the word. And to understand Patanjali, I think it is important to understand the original text. I say always that Patanjali is like Einstein because when Einstein wrote his famous five papers, the first three papers, the first one actually got him the Nobel Prize. Second created the, the theory of relativity. Third created the concept of the quantum physics and entirely changed the, like, you know, the arena of the physics. It went from macro to micro altogether. Patanjali was just like that. So when Einstein was writing it, he used no single citation. In, the, in his research papers, there was not even a single reference. It's just like knowledge came and he trans, you know, transferred that to the piece of paper. And uh, uh, there was no access to the library to uh, Einstein. He was not working in any laboratory. It just the knowledge came from some other realm and he was, you know, transmitting it on the piece of paper. Patanjali used the same. Many words that Patanjali used, they were never used before. Atha yoga nusashanam, yoga sachitta vritti nirodha. You need to understand the vrittis because they are not used anywhere else. A nirodha is not used anywhere else. Then, you know, so many other words. Tada drishtu sarupe vasthanam. Drishta is a very Vedantic concept that he used there. Vritti sarupya mitratra. Then you need to understand that what he is saying. Sarupya is a concept that comes in the Gita. So like, you know, it is the summary of like, you know, uh, of such a wonderful like you know scriptures coming together so it is uh, important to to know that and uh, last question i will take what are some of the challenges with translating the yoga sutra from the original yoga sutra into english well probably i answered that already i was not aware that was the second question and i think uh, the challenges are there one thing is that uh, you can only create a word if you have an experience for it like Eskimos have got 421 words for snow. We don't have 421 words for snow. But Patanjali has got 14 different words for Samadhi. When mind becomes stable, Vitar ke Samadhi. Vichar bhi chale gai, Vichar ke Samadhi. Vichar mein bhi sab vichar hai, na vichar hai. Uske baad phir aur aage chale gai, jau sanskar shish reh gai, to konsi Samadhi. Sanskar gir gai, to konsi Samadhi. Jau sanskar ke beej reh gai, to konsi Samadhi. Beej jal gai hai, to konsi Samadhi. Beej ke dag dho jane ke baad, konsi Samadhi. It is easy to create a path for outer journey. I can easily mark it. I can say, okay, bachelor, you finish. What kind of uh, courses you need to study in the bachelor, I can mark them. When you finish the bachelor examination, I can mark them. How many hours you are supposed to stay, I can mark them. I can also create a uh, you know, process of evaluation. I can create a process of how to give the degree. Outer journeys, every single step that I take can be easily marked. Inner journeys are not so much. Like, you know, you become a good human being, what kind of convocation would be held for you? There is no graduation day ceremony taking place if you become like in Vivekananda or Buddha. It's only an inner journey. But Patanjali was daring enough, scientific enough, precise enough to give the absolute clear-cut boundaries of when you walk from one dimension of the consciousness to another. That's the beauty of Patanjali. And that's why it is so almost impossible to ever create a translation of Patanjali's work. You can create the concept. Best is to actually go with the original word and go with the footnote. That is the idea. So I hope I, I probably have spoken too much, Gauravji. I'm very sorry. Yeah, it this is, is uh... wonderful. <laughs> we, we want to hear more. <laughs> do, do you have a few minutes for a few questions? There are a few questions from the audience. Yes, please. Yes, okay. please. So, Naresh ji, I know you have a question, and then uh, Manjushri ji, you have a question as well. Right? So, Naresh ji, would you mind going first? You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, sure, definitely. Thank you, Gaurav ji. Uh, thank you, uh, Chinmay bhaiya. Uh, I'm Naresh Gautam. Uh, I'm Pranam, a, Naresh ji. <laughs> yeah, I'm a member of uh, Bay Area Gayatri Parivar and also a scholar of SCI. So, uh, ah, I know you very well, Naresh <laughs> And I had an opportunity to interact with you many times in person and over email. So, yeah, so thank you for that. So I have a question, you know, uh, it's not exactly related to this topic, but since, you know, uh, you know, I'm getting an opportunity to talk to you. So I thought of to, uh, you know, 
ask you this question so since india is you know uh, going through really rough patch nowadays you know second wave of covid and we are here in uh, us seeing the struggle and fight the people you know uh, of india having so my question is like in this situation how we can help them you know from here you know although we cannot travel there uh, but we are here so what what could be the mechanism we can you know provide help to them i think that's a very good question it is definitely related to what we are talking about pradesh uh, we are uh, like i said that we are in a very uh, challenging time at the moment because almost every day there are so many people being infected and so many people are losing their lives so i think your question is probably the most pertinent question that we could have many ways to help of course like you know a uh, easier way to help from that distance is actually by the uh, by providing the resources because uh, there is no other better way that the one of the bigger challenges that india is facing this time on especially in this wave is that many people are critically ill but there are hardly any critical care beds available to cater the needs the tentative estimate i don't know how correct that is but tentative estimate it is like you know 200000 kind of icu beds are available in india but it's a country of 142 crores so it's a big like you know a uh, gap in that area and uh, uh, yesterday only we were trying to acquire some beds like you know, ventilators are hardly available and critical care beds are hardly available so if somehow um, the hindu society and like you know everyone else can come together to help create a covid hospital or something like that where critical care could be provided that's a need at the moment in this area we were like you know trying to work upon that yesterday also that uh, if we could convert our auditorium into a critical care uh, facility because large space is needed at the same time uh, hospital beds and such facilities are needed so if this is something that people can contribute then it may be an idea to work upon and we would be happy to lend our uh, place actually to make that happen Uh, there are doctors available there are nurses available to support it only challenges that uh, the resources are not available so if people are ready to help in that manner we would be very happy to happy to make our place available for that to happen thank you chamri manjushri ji you are you still here i don't see you uh, here if not uh, neeti ji you are next if you can ask your question Uh, thank you for the lecture i was very fortunate to have reviewed the lecture uh, that gaurav ji shared the link so the question that i have for you is um you you talk in very simplistic you know ways that makes it easy to understand but the question i have is how do you get to find the final frontier how do you get to the ultimate calm the samadhi that you talk about um it is the entire yoga sutra are actually pointing in that direction uh of one going through the path of the purification of the chitta i think in terms of reaching there many ways are pointing towards in that direction and i can understand what you probably are trying to ask because i think techniques are not so much important of course patanjali is talking about abhyas and vairagya as the samadhi yoga and then he is also talking about the ishwar pranidhan then he is talking about the kriya yoga in between he is talking about like seven parikarms that preparatory kind of practices needed then he is talking about ashtanga yoga so yoga sutras are full of those kind of techniques more than that i think what is important to have is to have patience persistence and perseverance whichever path you take it does not have to be uh, like you know many it has to be one what with absolute devotion determination and great kind of persistence um share two stories with you in that respect one is stories of a sage and uh, like you know he heard that the king is asking in his kingdom that which is the right path is ved right path sankhya right path mimansa right path nyaya right path vaisheshik right path 
so king has announced that who whosoever would convince me i would be happy to like you know talk to him because he had asked everyone and whosoever went he said my path is right but that path is wrong so king became more confused so he said i just want to know one path so sage said i will tell you the right path but for you to know the right path you need to come with me and i tell you the path in the uh, middle of the forest so he are you able to hear me hey you think i'll just mute uh... yeah. yes are you here yes we hear you gorav ji you able to hear me i are muted the, all the other lines please yes yeah. so what had happened like you know he asked uh, the king to come with him to the middle of the forest so he took him king went with the rishi and in the middle of the path there was a river so uh, a sage rishi said to the king he said that we need to cross the river and then moment we cross i tell you the path he said fine so he said we need a boat so king immediately got like 30 boats and uh, when uh, like you know the sage saw all the boats he started to he started to reject all of them he said i don't like this boat this boat is right a uh, black this is white this is red this is blue and all of them he started to reject he said i don't like this one i don't like that one and then king got irritated king said that why are you wasting time in selecting the boat just take any we need to cross the river and then you can tell me the path so uh, uh, rishi smiled and rishi said that then why are you wasting the time to select the path take any but stick to it and that's the message like you know you take any because there are so many techniques available for going to the path of samadhi but what is actually missing is not the knowledge of the technique is the patience persistence desperation determination devotion that is the path that one is supposed to take thank you gaurav ji i am i am unfortunately can oh, yeah. only take one question now because there is some very health emergency in our campus and they are just actually calling again in a sure sure sorry so uh, babu bhai ji would you like to ask the, the last question thank you very much everybody else i'm sorry we can't get to your question babu bhai ji babu bhai ji pranam <laughs> pranam chinmay ji this is babu bhai ji Yeah. Delighted to see you. Delighted to yeah. see you, Baba. Yeah, I want. Yeah, yeah. Our invitation to you for the why we are coming to Yogi University. Right now, you have to go. So, how will you link Krupa in and Patanjali Yoga Sutra? Where does the Krupa comes in our efforts in a cleansing Chitta, uh, Yama, Niyama, uh, Dhyan, Dharana, Samadhi. how will you link uh, krupa as per patanjali or i give you two beautiful examples oh bhai for that one time it comes in the discussion with acharya shankar and his disciple so somebody asks acharya shankar and he says that who is able to meet with the divine consciousness like who can unite which is the path of you and uh, Acharya Shankar says that one who gets the divine blessing, who gets the kripa. So then he asked that who gets the kripa. He said who does the purusharth. <laughs> so both are linked. <laughs> both are linked. That you know you get the kripa, you but you also need the purusharth. There are many people who are warriors in the Mahabharat, but only one become the Arjun. There are many like Kritvarma is there, Sattiki is there, there is Balram, but one is chosen. one who gets the kripa the chosen one becomes the arjun but there are so many otherwise great warriors purusharth like you know the entire mahabharat uh, field is full of uh, great warriors ananda is actually patanjali is mentioning it when he says he says uh, like you know the first chapter starts and then he says okay yogas chitta vritti nirodha comes the question what is vritti talks about them 
comes the question what is nirodh he talks about abhyas vairagya abhyam and nirodha let you do abhyas and vairagya what is abhyas what is vairagya he talks about if you are able to do it what kind of samadhi would come some pragya ata sam pragya he talks about that then he says there are also other ways that people can reach there then he says shraddha veer smriti samadhi pragya purvak utresha you can also reach by that way. then he says everything else is gone ishwar pranidhanatva also you can reach if there is ishwar pranidhan ishwar pranidhan forget about everything else that i talked about right now there is a lateral entry also you can go straight there if you have completed all other modules in the last life then you just go there is only one path needed for you to do and needed for you to take that is ishwar pranidhanatva <laughs> so now how the gopis did the nirodha because bhagavatam 10th chapter they tell that gopis bhakti is also nirodha bhakti so chitta vritti nirodha how did you will link bhakti yoga with patanjali that is also ha huh, that is also nirodha bhav bhai because the thing is what we need to understand that when patanjali is talking about like you know a, for example kriya yog tapaswatha shrupanadhan he talks about the kriya yoga and he takes all three you need the tapa to generate the energy you need the swadhyay to utilize the energy to the righteous direction even asuras are doing the tapa yes and but they don't have the vivek and you get the vivek only with the swadhyay when you are studying yourself and you are able to have the discernment but even vivek one can have the ahankar even they can have a ahankar that's why udhav lord yeah. krishna had sent the udhav to learn from gopis go forget about everything that you have learned go to the gopis and learn it that's where the issue pranidhan is so if you have got that path you have learned everything else then you don't have to learn anything else only thing is that true bhakti is difficult true bhakti is when you are actually all your choices preferences arguments and you, all your conditions are gone sarva sankalp sarvarambha parityagi sarva sankalp visarjit that you have forgotten about every arambh i am not taking anything nothing is coming out of me only divinity is flowing through me when you have that kind of like you know surrender then you don't need the yoga sutra you are the yoga sutra dhanyavad <laughs> gaurav ji so many good people i see i just now see him mayor atul bhai nimit ji all of the people so pranam to everyone bahut bahut dhanyawad pranam pranam ji thank you very much uh, it, it's uh, we were we are left with the taste for so much more that uh, we are unwilling to let go of today's session but we must we appreciate that you have taken time out today thank you to you and thank you to hci pranam namaste namaste namaskar Thank you have a good day and good evening